All right, so the goal of this video is to just show you how to set up a fairly basic R Markdown document and then render it out to an HTML web page. Okay, so I've taken one of the R Markdown files that I used to generate one of the um, modules in this course, and then I just open that up. Um, okay, so first off, I just want to show you some basic structure. Um, generally, it's better to start, not just start from scratch, but to you know, use a template or start from one of your prior documents just so you have to build out some of the boilerplate code here. Um, okay, so if you want to create a document from scratch, you just simply go to File, New File, R Markdown. Okay, and then it's going to ask you some questions here. I'm just going to or let you make some configurations. I'm just going to call this example MD for Markdown. Um, and I'm going to have it set up to be an HTML style output. Now there's options here for PDF and Word. Um, so we'll just do HTML, hit OK. And then this generates this fairly basic boilerplate example with some different, um, different types of content. OK, so just to step through some content, generally, you're going to have this header area with some information. By default here, it's just providing a title, the author, the publishing date here, and then the output. So it's rendering it out to HTML, um, to an HTML document. Um, this first chunk here um, is, is generally standard to start off with setting some options. So here are the only global options being uh, set as, as echo is equal to true. Uh, which means that it's going to print the the code um, along with the uh, along with the uh, the output. Um, if text starts start with with hashtags or pound sign, that's going to be a header. Um, one hashtag is the highest order header, and then you add hashtags to to go to lower header levels. So this is like a second level header here. Okay, um, here's this is an example of an inline. Um, link. Here's an example of bold. If you want to change that to italic, you could use use one asterisk on either end. Um, again, all the code chunks are going to be um, wrapped in this, right? So um, R tells you its code chunk. This is the name of the code chunk, and then you're going to close it with the same uh, same set of symbols there. Okay, so that's the basics. Let's look at my document. So I'm going to go back here. So this is a fully fleshed out document. So you can see it's got a good bit of content. So first off, I just want to show you some examples of, of formatting. Okay, so um, again, I this is going to get spit out not as a basic um, HTML, but instead I'm going to use this um, re, um, RMD formats package. Um, which is a package to provide some additional themes that you can use with with Markdown. There's other ones, for example, like Pretty Docs. Um, and then from this package, I'm using this read the down style, and then from and then I'm setting some specific arguments related to that style. So this first argument is self-contained. I've set that to false. That's generally what I prefer to do. If you set that to true, it's just going to generate an HTML file with all the material basically embedded in the HTML. And that makes some pretty dirty, um, complex HTML, which might be hard to edit or work with after the fact if you're um, familiar with you know, working with HTML. Um, if it's a simple site, that might be fine, um, but I prefer to set it to false. And what that means is instead, it's going to generate instead of just generating a single HTML file, it's going to spit out all the content in a folder structure. So like your JavaScript, your CSS, your your media, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, um, this thumbnail is set to true. That means it's going to render images to thumbnails. I generally do that just so it takes up less space. Uh, Lightbox has to do again with how images are rendered. It's got like a light box around it. Uh, gallery means you can click on an image and then you can scroll through all the images on the page through a gallery that kind of um, you know be, is um, put in the foreground of the website. And then you could, there's different styles for for um, highlighting the R code. Um, I'm using this Tango method here. There's a couple other options. Okay, so that's all basically controlling how things are going to get rendered. All right, so the next thing I have is my setup. So note I've defined a few other uh, settings here. So um, other than just the echo, which was um, the default example had. So again, I'm leaving echo equal to true. So we're going to get our code, and we're going to get also the output. 
Um, it it generally um, puts any any uh, comments. It's gonna prefix with something. Um, to make it a little bit cleaner, I just put an empty string here so it doesn't prefix it. I, that's just a personal preference. Uh, collapse equals to true is means it's going to take all the code from one code chunk and collapse the code and the output into a cell block. Um, I just did that because it makes the page a little bit more uh, condensed, um, but you can also not do that. And then I've also set warnings to false and message to false. So I don't want it to print any warnings or, or messages or errors or whatever. Um, I, I just want to get my code and my output um, and then, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it was ever meant to be printed. So um, this, you may not want this if you're actually trying to like troubleshoot, but to make a nice clean website, um, that's a nice option. Okay, um, this we can just kind of ignore. But uh, I'm using this package here. This allows you to have have a little copy button on all your code chunks, so you can copy it out of the website. Um, I'm not really gonna deal with that, but that's that's what that's for. Okay, so first order header, second order header. This is an example of a numbered list. Again, another header, some plain text. There we have a bolded word, right? Um, here, this is an italicized word. Um, yep, and then um, again, bolded words, so on and so forth. So you can see the syntax here. Um, this is an example of using a string um, as a link. So we wrap it in square brackets, and then in parentheses we put the path to the uh, to the website or the, or the link. Um, another, a couple other just quick notes uh, before we render this page. Um, you don't actually have to include a name for each R chunk, you, so you could just leave this out. Um, it can be useful if you want to be able to like call an R chunk later, for, or like maybe do some formatting. Um, but the key thing to know is if you're going to include names, they all have to be unique. So I can't reuse A, right? So I just maybe do A, B, C through all of them, just so they all had a unique name. Um, but they can't repeat. If it, if you do repeat, like I have this chunk as A, and instead of moving on to B, I call this A, it'll flag an error and it won't render. Um, yep. Yeah. And note that you can set other options here um, if you want to overwrite the default options that are set at the top of the Markdown document up here. So again, here I'm just uh, these are pretty much the same. I didn't really need to do that. But if I wanted it to say print a warning or something, I could overwrite there. Okay, um, I don't think there's many other different, you know, use cases in this document, uh, but you can see this is all built out. Um, I actually feel like this is a nice way to work. There's also like spell check and stuff built in now, so it's it's actually kind of nice. I actually like typing in here more than in a word processor. Um, I much just I've gotten used to it. Uh, again, that's just personal preference. Okay. Um, one other note, um, so this is kind of the standard markdown view. There's this other option called Use Visual Editor. I'll just show you what that looks like. So here, it actually works more like a word processor, so all your code is in these chunks. This is really big because I set the font size up just for you know showing the output here. Um, but then it actually renders your text out as opposed to with the markdown formatting. I don't really think this is better, but if you prefer to use this more like a standard word processor, um, you know, that's an option there. Um, you can also do things like, you know, um, add in images. There's options for formatting and tables. You can add different types of code chunks, so like a Python code chunk or an SQL as opposed to just R, whatever. So I'm going to switch this back to the regular version. Okay, so this is basically done. So what I'd like to do now is actually render it. So there's a couple ways that you can render a document. If you want to, if you want to render it using the uh, like within the code, um, then you can use this. Um, so I'm just grabbing this from my other screen, so I don't have to copy it in. Okay, you can use this method. So it, this is coming from the R Markdown package and it's render site. And then you can put some options in there. Let's just have a look at it and see what the options are. So let's just do help render site. Okay, so this popped up over here and you can see what the options are. So um, the inputs like the directory you're writing to, the output format, 
environment settings. Um, so, so there's lots of so there's lots of options in there. Um, so you can read through that. Uh, another option is you can just do it up here with knit. So that's what I'm going to do because that's just simpler for, for now. So um, I'm going to click on this and then you can see there's a couple options. I'm just going to do knit to read the down, which is the format I chose here. And then we'll run that. It's really good to save beforehand too. So let me just save real quick. All right, so we'll do knit to read the down. And now it's running through the knit process there, and then it launches it. Okay, so this is the page that it generated. So uh, we've got all of our content. There's a standard kind of like red formatting. Um, you can play around with that. Um, generally what I do is um, I just play around with the CSS, but you kind of got to know about like HTML and CSS to, to do that. All right, so this is our website. Now let's actually look at where it ended up. Um, so this is gonna get this got rendered to my local machine into a folder. Okay, so I have all of this, um, all this content in this folder here. So I just rendered this um, O2 data manipulation RMD file, and it generated this object, which is an HTML file. So if I click on that, that opens in my default web browser, which for me is um, is uh, Firefox. Um, so would open in whatever your default is. Oops. And effectively, that's just a local HTML file being read off of your disk. Now, let's look at that file like in a code editor, uh, just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm open up uh, Visual Studio Code here. This is a different one, so let me open up that file. So I'm going to go to that location. And renders, and... We want to open up O2 here. So you see this is basically what it rendered, which is HTML. Um, so if you're not familiar with HTML, you don't need to worry about it. But um, you know, basically we have all this info in the header. We have stuff about how it's going to format the code chunks, since there's some scripts in here, um, formatting. And then when we get into the body, here's our actual content. So just real quick, just so you can kind of see what was over here. All right, so like there's the the header, uh, which is this first header here, and there's all like the table contents, and then down here in the main, we're getting into the main content. So there's the second header there, objectives, all of this content. So if you edit this HTML, it's going to obviously edit the page. So for example, I'm just going to remove this header here, save the document, refresh the page. And you can see that now that's disappeared, right? Um, anyway, so that's effectively what it renders. Now, this produces fairly clean HTML. Some of it's messy, especially the code, but I mean, you can see your paragraphs and stuff in there. So if you need to go through and like fix mistakes or maybe change some formatting, if you know some HTML, it's not too difficult to do. Um, and then again, that's because I set the self-contained um, option to false so that means all the like content got rendered someplace else as opposed to inside the html so where it got rendered uh what will be a folder with the same name as the html file with file added to the end so we go up to the top here this is where all the content for that page got rendered so o2 data manipulation files so it just adds underscore files there if you go in here you can see there's all this stuff right so there's stuff with like jQuery, which is for like making JavaScript easier. This clip, Clippy is for the copy and paste on the code. So these are like JavaScript libraries. Bootstrap is for formatting and responsiveness. Um, and here you can see read the down. Um, so if I click on this object, um, it, this is the actual styling. So if you know about CSS, that well, there's other styling applied, but this is kind of the the like specific styling for read the down so if you um, want to go in here if you if you know css you can go in here and work with this and play and actually change the page and that's actually what i do for my sites i just mess around with this file and change colors and stuff um but that you got a little css and html to, to do that and also if there's any like images on the page that will get rendered into a folder in here too as like generally jpegs or png files so compressed files 
Okay, so there are other things you can obviously do with Markdown. This is just a quick run through on, of uh, making a HTML web page from an R Markdown file. Um, just some things to consider. Um, you know, finding a good format to use that are from the existing formats is a good idea. So if you, you can f you can find examples and figure out how to um, you know set up this header so it renders it correctly. Um, and then if you really want to be specific, you might have to you can always manipulate the HTML or CSS. Um, okay, cool. So that's an example of rendering a website from R using R Markdown in Knitter.